Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A, and today I want to talk with you about what happens when a squared plus b squared doesn't equal c squared. Now, I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, I've been told that a squared plus b squared equals c squared since I was in seventh grade. That's definitely true. That's the Pythagorean theorem. And you're not wrong, but let's take a minute to think about what the Pythagorean theorem really says. So we often say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and of course that's for any right triangle. If you don't have a right angle, then this isn't going to hold true. Now my picture gives you a hint at what's really going on here. It's not really good enough to just say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What we really mean when we talk about the Pythagorean theorem is that one of the legs of the triangle squared plus one of the legs of the triangle squared has to equal the hypotenuse of the triangle squared. Right, so when we write a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're sort of agreeing that the hypotenuse of the triangle, that is to say the angle opposite the 90 degree, is going to be the c, the variable c in that equation. But if we relax that restriction, if we say, hey, wait a minute, what if we try this out? What if instead of calling c the hypotenuse, what if we just let c be the largest side of a triangle? Well, then we can consider what happens if a squared plus b squared doesn't equal c squared. So let me take my little picture over here and let's imagine if this were a right triangle and that was the length of a and that was the length of b, then that's the length that the hypotenuse would need to be. Take a minute and just think about what I said, make sure that makes sense to you. If this were going to be a right triangle, then that dotted line represents the length that my hypotenuse needs to be if the sides, the other two legs are going to be these two lengths here. Right? Now imagine for a moment that we had a hypotenuse that was too long. What if my hypotenuse was like this? So let's just imagine that that is my C, right? So, excuse me, so it's not a hypotenuse anymore. It's just the longest side of the triangle. Imagine if the third side of the triangle was this long. Now, in order to make a triangle, I have to get this, you know, this end of the segment to touch there and this end of this segment to touch there. So first, let's think about what happens with a squared and b squared. So if we were to compute a squared plus b squared for this picture and compare that to c squared, what would happen? Well, if c was this length, then it would hold for the Pythagorean theorem, right? This would be exactly equal to c squared. But my c is way bigger than it should be for a right triangle. So that means that c squared is going to be bigger than it should be. Does that make sense? Which means the c squared is going to be bigger than the a squared plus b squared. So I like to think of this as my C being too big, right? C is too big to make a right triangle. Now let's just imagine what has to happen in order for this to become a triangle. If you want this line segment to touch over here and you want this line segment to touch over here, you can't change the length of the segments. The only thing you can change is the angle. What has to happen to this angle in order for this to touch here and this to touch here? Hopefully you can see that that angle has to open up it's got to become larger than 90 degrees. Can you th see that? If this angle opens up, then these two points are going to spread out a little bit further. This one's going to be able to reach all the way over here. This one will be able to reach all the way over here and we'll end up with an obtuse triangle. Pause the video and take a minute here if this doesn't make sense to just think through what I'm saying. If it were a right triangle, if that's a right angle, I need the hypotenuse to be this long. I'm saying, what if my hypotenuse is just too big? Well, that is to say, if the largest side of the triangle is just too big, right? So it's not a hypotenuse, it's bigger than the hypotenuse would need to be. The only way then to connect these two line segments to this larger one is if that angle opens up to be more than 90 so that I can connect this one and this one all the way across here. And if that happens, I'm going to get an obtuse triangle. Now, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I have a right triangle. Here we have a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, and I'm getting an obtuse triangle. So that should make you think, well, wait a minute, what happens if a squared plus b squared, right? So what if a squared, oops, don't want to be in blue. What if a squared plus b squared was not less than c squared, but was in fact greater than c squared? So let's think about what would create that situation, right? If I want my c squared to be smaller than a squared plus b squared, then that means that the c has to be too small to make a right triangle, right? So I can't have it be this length. This is the length that would make a right triangle. What I need is I need a c that's a little bit smaller than that. 
right? So I need a C that is too small. So let's do that same little thought experiment here. If I can't stretch or change the length of A and B, I'm stuck with those, then the only way for me to make this into a triangle with that smaller side is if I change that angle. Well, what has to happen to this angle if I want these two endpoints here to reach these two endpoints of the blue line? That angle is going to have to get smaller, isn't it? Again, pause the video if you can't see that and think through this argument. Right now, C is too small to make a right triangle. For a right triangle, it would need to be this entire length, but it's not big enough. So in order for me to squish these two endpoints down so that they can touch this segment, I'm going to have to make this angle smaller, and it's going to have to become an acute angle. And thus, I'm going to have myself an acute triangle. So what we're seeing is that if we loosen the restriction on the C in the Pythagorean theorem, and we just say, you know what, let's not make C the hypotenuse, let's just make C the largest side, right? If we make C the largest side, then we can actually use Pythagorean theorem to figure out if we have an obtuse triangle. That would happen anytime our C is too big, right? In other words, the largest side is too big to be a hypotenuse. And anytime we have a C that's too small, right? So it's too short to be the hypotenuse, then we would have an acute triangle. And that's pretty cool because that means that now we can use Pythagorean theorem not just to find a missing side or to tell if something is a right triangle, but we can actually use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what kind of triangle we're looking at. So what I want to do is run through a couple of examples whoops, with you, and we'll see how that works. Uh, let me just grab this, take it with me. Okay, so let's take a look at the next page here. Let's say I wanted to classify a triangle with sides of length 6, 8, and 9 as being either acute, obtuse, or right. So the first thing I might want to do is think about my picture. So here, the A and the B are going to be my 6 and my 8, right? So let's say A is 6 and B is 8. And then the question is, what is that 9? Is the 9 just the right length to make a right triangle? Well, then I'll get a right triangle. But maybe it's too big or too small. So how do we find out? Well, it's easy. We just let 9 be C because that's our biggest side. And we're going to check, like 6 squared plus 8 squared and we're going to simply ask ourselves, like, does that equal 9 squared? That's a simple thing to do. We have 36 plus 64 over here, and over here we have 81. 36 and 64 is 100, and 100 does not equal 81, right? In fact, our hypotenuse here, where I want the wannabe hypotenuse, right, our C is too what? Too big or too small? It's too small, right? I would need this to be 100 to get a right triangle. It's too small. It's only 81. So that means that when I come over here to finish my picture, I'm going to draw my 9 like this. It's not big enough to make a right triangle. For a right triangle, it would have to go all the way across, and it just doesn't quite make it. So what's got to happen to that angle in order for me to close the gap here and bring this point over to here and bring this point over to here? Hopefully you can see that that angle has to get smaller, and that's going to make this an acute triangle. That's pretty cool, right? We started with the three sides of a triangle, and we checked to see if it worked in Pythagorean theorem. Now, it didn't work, but it didn't work in a particular way. The largest side just wasn't big enough. So that means that this has to be an acute triangle. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I want to classify a triangle with sides 6, 8, and 11. So I'm going to start the same way as I did a moment ago. What I'm going to do is start with my picture of what it would look like if it were a right triangle. Right, so if it were a right triangle, A could be 6, B could be 8, and then the question is, what about this 11, right? Is it the size that I need to be a right triangle, or is it going to be too big or too small? Well, let's find out. Since the 11 is the largest side here, I'm going to treat that as my C in the, in the you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and I'm simply going to go over here and check. 6 squared plus 8 squared, and I'm going to ask myself, does that equal 11 squared? Well, we know what 6 squared plus 8 squared is. the same as the last problem. That's 100. And 11 squared, and you might not know, but you know that it's definitely bigger than 100, right? Because 10 squared is 100. So this is not equal. This time, my hypotenuse is what? 2. That's right. Too big, right? There's more there than I need. So if I want to finish this picture, it would look something like this, right? I've got too much hypotenuse. That 11 is too big. I cannot make a right triangle. But... What's got to happen to that angle for me to make a triangle? 
right? If I want to reach this point over to here and reach this point over to here, what has to happen to that angle in order to create a triangle? It's got to get bigger, right? Which means this is going to be an obtuse triangle. And again, we were able to classify this by just using Pythagorean theorem. I don't even need, I don't know any of the angles in this triangle, right? It's not a right triangle, like that angle got bigger. I have no idea what any of the angles are, but I can still tell that it's an obtuse triangle because my hypotenuse is too big. Well, my wannabe hypotenuse, right, is too big. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's say we want to classify a triangle with sides of length 5, 12, and 10. Now, this time, be careful. The 10 is the last number, but it is not the biggest number. The 12 is the biggest number, right? So when I go into my picture here, I'm going to say, all right, if this was a right triangle, I would have a leg that was 5, I would have another leg that was 10, and then this 12 is what I'd be looking for, right? So let's see if it's the right size or not the right size. If I go here and I check 5 squared plus 10 squared, and I'm going to ask myself, does that equal 12 squared? Okay, well, let's see. 5 squared is 25. 10 squared is 100, so that's 125. Well, that is not equal to 144, right? So it's not going to work for Pythagorean theorem. It's not a right triangle. What is going on here? The big side is too big, right? It should be just 125. It's 144. So my picture looks like this. I've got a side that's too big, so it's going to have to be what kind of a triangle? That's right. It'll have to open up. It's going to become an obtuse triangle couple more examples here. What if we had a triangle with sides of like 5, 12, and 13? Okay, well this time, where's the biggest side? That would be the 13. So the 13 is going to be my C, right? We'll see what happens here. And then 5 is going to go over here, and 12 is going to go over here. And I'm going to check. 5 squared plus 12 squared, does that equal 13 squared? Now, you might recognize this one. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared, we just talked about, is 144. And by the way, if you add those, what do you get? 169. Well, that is, in fact, exactly what 13 squared is. So what does this tell me? If it works in the Pythagorean theorem, this is a right triangle. right? That one works for the Pythagorean theorem. The leg squared plus the other leg squared really is the hypotenuse squared. So that's a good old right triangle. No surprise there. It's not acute. It's not obtuse. It is right. One final example for you, if we want to classify a triangle with sides 5, 12, 15. So maybe you see where this one's going already, because we already had these numbers 5 and 12. So 15 is going to be our largest side, which means 5 and 12 would be the potential legs for this triangle. And let's see, if I go over here and I check out 5 squared plus 12 squared, and I'm going to ask myself, does that equal 15 squared. Well, that's 25 and 144, which we just did on the last slide was 169. 15 squared, you might not know, it's pretty big, 225. Well, those are definitely not equal, right? That largest side is way too big. I only needed 169, I got 225, which means this side is too big, and the only way I can get a triangle is if I open this angle up and create an obtuse angle, thus creating for me an obtuse triangle. So it turns out that we can do a lot more with Pythagorean theorem than just find a missing side in a right, a right triangle. We can actually use Pythagorean theorem to figure out if we're even looking at a right triangle. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.